Hi, my name is Paul Grogan, and in this Gaming Rules video, I'm going to be giving you an overview of the game Crisis, published by Luda Creations. The game is set in the country of Axia, a place with a glorious past, an uncertain present, and an even more unpredictable future. Axia is a country in crisis, both politically, socially, and economically. You and the other players are industrialists who must help the country thrive by investing in companies, hiring employees to run them, and producing resources, which are then exported to the foreign market. The game can end in one of two ways. Either a total of seven rounds are completed, which means the country has survived the crisis, or the country can suffer an economic collapse and the game can end early. A game of crisis lasts for up to seven rounds. During each round, players will take it in turns to place their managers onto action spaces of the main game board. Once all managers are placed, the locations are resolved in order, starting with shady business here and progressing through to exports. During the production step, all players then run their companies using the employees and resources they have in order to produce other resources, credit and or victory points. After production, players with managers in the export location may sell some of their resources for additional points and credits, or just sell them to the black market for more credits but no points. At the end of each round, it's time to evaluate the situation, and Axia's financial status may rise or fall. Each round consists of five phases, which are resolved in order. Phase one is the event phase and you draw an event card of the appropriate stack depending on the current financial status of Axia. These events have an immediate impact on the game. For example, this political turmoil card lowers the financial status by three and reduces the output of certain companies for that round. Phase two is where you pay interest on any loans you've previously taken. I'll explain how you get loans shortly. Phase three is where most of the important decisions take place. In turn order, which is shown by the player markers here, players take it in turns to place one of their managers onto an available action space. And no actions are actually carried out at this time, you're just placing your managers on the board and the actions will be resolved later in the round. Most action spaces only have room for one manager, but the first two locations have large action spaces, meaning multiple managers can go there. Phase four is the operations phase, and this is where the locations are resolved one by one. I'm not going to cover all of the locations in this video, I'm just going to give you a rough idea and cover the main ones. First up is Shady Business, where you get to draw an influence card and keep it secret in your hand. These cards are one use only and have an effect on the game as shown on the card. These two spaces are to adjust turn order for the next round. If you're in desperate need of money, you can go here and take a loan. You get 10 credits, but you lose one victory point. You can have up to four loans, but you must pay interest on each one. And if you don't repay your loans by the end of the game, you will lose points. These spaces are gaining employees, either local workers, foreign workers, or your friendly neighborhood robot temporary worker. The type of employee is shown by the icon at the bottom of the tile, and the skill value is shown in the top right. Not all employees are created equally. You will need your employees to run your companies later on. And speaking of companies, each round there are six of them available, and you take one of them by placing a manager on the company action space itself. Investing in a company costs the money shown here and immediately gets you the victory points shown here. This area is all about buying resources. You have to pay both money and victory points to get these resources because thematically you are importing them, which is bad for the local economy. And here is where you can produce energy, either by buying it with credits or converting certain resources into energy. Each round, all players get to run all of their companies. The left side of a company shows the necessary employees. If you do not put the appropriate types of employees on these slots, you cannot run the company for that round. Next to it are the required resources, which you must spend. And again, if you don't have these resources, you cannot run the company. The output of the company is shown in the bottom right. So in this example, I have a worker here and I spend one energy and I produce two food. However, the bottom of the company has slots for optional employees. My farm, for example, has three slots. 
If I was to place a worker of skill level one here, then the numbers add up and I produce three food instead of two. And if I was to also place another skill level two farmer here, I would get five food in total. Nom nom. Employees can work in only one company in each round, but you can move them around to a different company next round. Also very important, but resources generated by a company cannot be used as the input for another of your companies in the same round. So if you have a company that requires food, you must have had that food since the start of the production step. For example, I could not use the food generated from my farm this round to run the heavy industry. The main reason for producing resources is to export them and get credits and victory points. You can only do this if you place the manager in the export section during that round's planning phase. And this location is resolved differently. First, the player here gets to do an action. Then the player here, then here, and then back to the start again. So each player with a manager here can do multiple actions when resolving this location. When it's your turn to take an action, you choose one of the eight leftmost export contracts on display and remove it from the board. This indicates the type of resource you can export and how many. Each resource you export gets you victory points and credits according to the table here. So if I exported three minerals, I get three points and six credits. Alternatively, you could sell your resources to the black market. This doesn't use an export contract tile and you can return up to four resources of one type to the supply to take double the amount of credits you would have got if you exported it, but you gain no points. You will learn with experience when is the right time to sell your resources to the black market or to export them for victory points. As mentioned earlier, at the end of each round you perform an evaluation. Each player compares their current victory points to the VP goal for that round. If you have more victory points than the current goal, then Axia's financial status will rise. Huzzah! But if you have less victory points than the current goal, then Axia's financial status will decline. Boo! So, for example, in this game, the current goal for the round is 19. Red has 22 points, so that will cause the financial status to rise by 3. White has 18, so that's a minus 1. And blue has 15, which is a minus 4. So the net adjustment is therefore minus two. The game ends early if the financial status of Axia drops below zero, meaning the country has gone bankrupt. If this happens, all loans are written off, credits are worth nothing, and the player with the most victory points wins the game, as long as they have reached the current goal. Otherwise, the game ends after seven rounds of play. Every five remaining credits are worth one point each, and any outstanding loans are minus two points. And again, the player with the most points wins. Crisis is an interesting worker placement game, where players are competing to be the best, while simultaneously trying to prevent the country from going under. It combines worker placement with a company-based resource production system, and event and influence cards to shake things up and keep things a little bit unpredictable. I hope you found this video useful in giving you an overview of how the game plays. If you want to see any more of my videos, then please consider subscribing to my channel. And for more information about the game, please visit ludicreations.com. Until next time, take care and thanks for watching.